Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make homemade cream of mushroom soup. Now I did head to the store the other day and I purchased a store brand of condensed cream of mushroom soup. I'm not sure it was probably a buck 29, a buck 39, but that's still more than I want to spend. And I have really no idea what's in this cream of mushroom soup unless I read the ingredients. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not have time to read the ingredient labels when I'm shopping. So for me, I like to make my own, not only because you're going to have more on hand, but also you know what's in this cream of mushroom soup. So if you wanna see how I make it, stick with me and yeah, we'll make some good stuff. Not whatever this is. Oh, that was We're gonna start by slicing one pound of mushrooms of your choice. Here I'm just using button mushrooms. Once you have your mushrooms all sliced up, you can either leave them as they are, or if you have family like mine and don't particularly care for larger chunks of mushrooms, you can chop them into smaller pieces. Once your mushrooms are all chopped up to your liking, I like to add things to bowls. This way it's a little closer to my working station and I don't lose it everywhere. Next, we're gonna chop up one medium onion, only using about half. Depending on the size of your onion, you could use the whole thing. We just need about three quarters of a cup here. The onion and celery will be cooked at a different time than the mushrooms. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to a smaller bowl. Next up on the chopping block is one rib of celery. If your family does not like celery, you can go ahead and omit this as it is optional. If you don't have celery and only have celery seed, you can definitely replace it with one quarter teaspoon of the celery seed. Into your saucepan, we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter. You can use salted, you can use unsalted, whatever you have in your house. Turn this to medium heat and let your butter melt. Now that our butter, now that our butter has melted, we're going to add in our chopped mushrooms. We're gonna cook these down for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the reason why I do that is because the mushrooms will create a ton of liquid. So we wanna get the liquid out first before we add our onions and celery, and this will just help give the mushrooms a ton of flavor. Okay, now that our mushrooms are cooked down, all of the liquid is removed from them, we're gonna add onions and celery. Now this is three quarters of a cup of onions and probably a quarter of a cup of celery. If you don't have fresh celery, you can go ahead and use a quarter teaspoon of celery seed.
And these will be cooked down until they're translucent. Our onion, celery, and mushroom combo. Let's cook down nicely. We'll show you. So pretty. So next we're going to add in our thyme, our garlic powder, salt, and pepper. So we're going to do one teaspoon of garlic powder. I should have took the lids off before I did this, but... I will say this is like real cooking. Stuff happens. <laughs> okay, so now that's all added in. I like to add it in now just so everything can get nice and toasty. And it brings out a lot of flavor too. Ooh. Don't leave your mixing tool in the pot. Previous. Hot tamales. Okay, so we have half a teaspoon of black pepper. We won't reuse that one. And one teaspoon of salt. Mix that in as well. And now we're going to use equal parts flour to butter. This is going to make us a nice roux. So I added four tablespoons of salty butter. Now we're going to add four tablespoons of flour. It's almost a third of a cup. So mix that in and give it a good stir for about two minutes. This is going to cook the raw flour out. You don't want to eat raw flour. I don't know why the bag just says so. On this channel, I am not sciency at all. Okay, so if it's sticking to the bottom a little bit, go ahead and turn your heat down. It's going to save your hand too from the heat. And then once that's all cooked down, we're going to use chicken broth. This is the first chicken broth that I ever made. And it, it didn't turn out as dark as I would have liked it to be. So what we're going to do to fix that is add a little bit of chicken base. I know, I know it's like one of those you chicken bases, but that is what I have. So we're going to add about one teaspoon of that. Mix it in really good. And then our flour should be cooked down since our pot was pretty hot. We'll just kind of shorten the time a little bit. All of the chicken stock at one time. If not, you take the chance of basically like Lumps. Lumps are no bueno. Now, that chicken stock did come straight from the refrigerator, so we'll turn it back up to medium. To add, oh, I forgot to tell you, that was actually two and a half cups of chicken stock. So to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of milk of your choice. We've used many different types of milk. Whew. Okay, off to get the milk. Nice. We just have 2% milk today. I am going to actually whisk the 
this really quick just because. Just in case. Okay, I feel better. All right, now that everything has come together really well, we're gonna go ahead and add our three quarter cups of milk. We don't wanna add it when it's too hot just because it could possibly curdle. And we're not making uh, cottage cheese here. So we'll let this simmer. 10 minutes. We have hit the 11 minute mark, I do believe. It smells delicious, by the way. Uh, so at this point, it has come up to a boil. I did turn it off for a second so I can go grab some water and flour. But at this point, you can either eat it as is, or if it's not thick enough for the application you're using it for, you can actually make a slurry. I don't use this very often, but what you do for a slurry is add in equal parts flour. It's really hard for me to measure. I just pretty much eyeball things. So we're gonna take the flour, and we're gonna take the water, and we're gonna whisk it together. We're actually gonna do more because what I'm using it for, it needs to be thick. And the key to a slurry is when you're pouring this in here, let's see, it did thicken up a little bit more. And it will, it's gonna thicken up when it cools down as well. But back to the slurry. When you're adding your slurry in here, you want to whisk and then slowly drizzle this in. Come on, okay. Because this will prevent lumps as well. So just whiskey, whiskey, don't burn yourself. It's always my fear. And then we're gonna bring this up to a boil again because it was faucet water, which typically is either cold or room temperature, unless you actually choose hot. Anyway, I think I'm just rambling. Okay, so we'll let that come up to a boil again. Let's take a peek. Grab our whisk here so we can see just how thick it has gotten. And while that is thickening, we're gonna stir it periodically and I'm gonna clean up some of the mess. I'm actually going to keep my bowl and my water here and probably get myself some more flour just because it is not thick enough. Now, like I said before, I don't measure hardly anything unless I'm baking because that's so sciencey, which I don't like to be sciencey. Um, I eyeball everything. I know how much garlic salt I put on my green beans just by the swipes and yeah. Okay, so it is thickening, but just not enough for my liking. We're just bringing over the big guy. I think that's eyeballed enough.
Don't mind the squeaky floor. My husband came home from work to be. Okay, so whiskey, whiskey. And slowly drizzle. Much better. Let's take a look at this. Much, much, much thicker. And it will still continue to thicken once it comes up to a rolling boil. Now that our cream of mushroom soup has gotten to the thickness that we want, you can stick them in your mason jars, either with these clear reusable lids, or I actually save my lids just for things that can go into the refrigerator or like dried beans or something like that. So if you're not using it right away, go ahead and place it in your mason jar and it can be kept in the refrigerator for up to five days. Now it cannot be frozen simply because there's milk in it. Sorry, it cannot be canned because there's milk in it. So let's go ahead and do that. And all I do is use my funnel, a ladle, and just like canning, if you've ever canned, we're just gonna fill up our jar. I'm actually not going to fill up this second jar simply because I will be using this tonight. Maybe that's hot. And there you have it. Homemade cream of mushroom soup. Thanks so much for watching.